Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this lecture of Python, we will be learning about list. List is a part of a sequence like list, tuple, strings. These are the part of the sequences. We will be learning how to initialize a list, how to display its element, how to display its specific elements, first element, last element, how to confirm whether a particular element exists in the list or not, how to display list slice, that is a range of elements of the list, how to delete an element of the list, how to append an element, how to change a list element and how to sort list elements. We will be learning to this step by step. In this lecture, we will be learning everything about the list, how to create list, how to update the content of the list, how to append content, how to sort it. Like for example, if I run this program, it is asking you how many names are there. Suppose I enter, there are three names, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Enter the name to search. Suppose I enter Friday. Friday is not in the list. Change it. What list element you want to change? Suppose I enter say Tuesday. Enter the new name. Suppose I enter as a Saturday. See, the name Tuesday in the list is changed to Saturday. After sorting, you get the list as follows. And we will be learning these all programs. All the list methods will be learned through the running programs. So watch the video up till the end. Let us start. In this lecture, we will be learning about sequences. Python provides three sequences. List, tuples and string. We will be learning all the three. This lecture is focused on lists only. So let me tell you that what are sequences. These are the objects which are enclosed in square brackets. Right? And it can include mismatch of the values also. Like in numerical arrays that we did. There were similar elements. They were only numericals only. But you can have mix of them. String, characters, fractional values, whatever. But they have to enclose in the square bracket. One thing. Secondly, out of these three sequences, that is, out of tuples, strings and list, strings and tuples are immutable. That is, you cannot change the original string or tuple. You have to make a copy of it and you can make the changes into it. But in list, lists are mutable. You can make the changes into the original list itself, right? And you can apply three operations on all the three sequences. You can use plus operator to add two sequence. You can use multiply to repeat, to multiply a sequence. And to access any of the sequence, you have to use its index location and close in the square bracket as we did in the numerical arrays, right? I assume that you've seen the numerical arrays. If you haven't, I'm providing you the link in the description box. Watch that video. You will find it very easy to understand this lecture, right? And the rest of the theory, how to extract and how to do slicing of the list, we'll do it practically, okay? I have written a couple of programs for you. Like this is the first program. See, I am creating a list. Because the list elements are known to me, I am creating and initializing a list with the four strings. John, Kelly, Caroline and Paula. These four names will be assigned to this names. Recall that the list has the elements enclosed in the square bracket. Okay. And you can access them by using the index locations. Like in numerical arrays, this John will be assigned to the names zero location. Kelly will be assigned to names 1 index location. Caroline will be assigned to the names 2 index location. And this Paula will be assigned to the names 3 index location. Like in numerical array, the last location is at location name 3. And it is at index location minus 1. Similarly, this Caroline is at index location minus 2. That is why I am asking you to watch that one dimensional array lecture. Please do watch it, right? So, it will print the name at the 0 index location. That is, it will display John. On displaying names minus 1 index location, you will get the last name. But when you write names minus 2, you will get the second last name. That is, you will get the Caroline on the screen. Let's copy and run this program. I have copied it. I am going to spider ID, which is already there, and paste it. Run it. See. John has appeared because of this names 0 index location. And Caroline because of this minus 2. If I write it minus 1, obviously the last name will be displayed on the screen. See. Paula has appeared. Exactly like in the one dimensional array, you are using in keyword to access all the elements of the list. See what it is happening. The range will go from 0 to length. Length function will get you the length of the list. The so length of the list is 4. So the value of i will range from 0 till 4. See this 4 is exclusive. That is the for loop will terminate at the value 4. The value of i will range from 0 till 3. Okay. So in the first iteration, the value of i is 0. Print names at 0 index location. It is John at the names 0 index location. 
So you get John on the screen. The value of i will be incremented to one. One is less than four. Yes. Print the name at the names one index location. That is, you will get the Kelly. Again, the value of i will increment to two. It will print the name at names two index location. That is, Caroline. The value of i will become three. It will print Paula. After that, the value of i will become four, which is not allowed. The loop will terminate. Okay. See John, Kelly, Caroline, and Paula. We are using in keyword to display all the list elements. What will happen with the in keyword? The first list element will be assigned to this variable n. The loop will execute and it will print the list element which is in n. After that, the next list element will be assigned to this variable n. Again, the loop will execute. It will display that element. The for loop will terminate when all the list elements are accessed and assigned to the variable n. So basically, we are understanding different ways of accessing the list element through index location through in keyword. See, you'll get the same output. All the array elements are displayed. This is for searching. You have the names list which has for the four names already. You are asking the user to enter a name. Suppose I enter the name Caroline. The string Caroline will be assigned to this variable n. You are using in keyword to search, right? You are searching if the Caroline word. Exist in this names list. Yes, obviously. So it will go and execute this if block. You will get the message on the screen that enter name is present in the list. Suppose you run this program again. You enter my name Bintu. Bintu will be assigned to the variable n. Using this in keyword, you are searching all the elements in the names list. Does the Bintu exist in the names list? No. So you get the message on the screen. Sorry, the enter name is not in the list. Let's copy it and run it. To see if it is working well, select, delete, and Control V is for paste. Let's run it. Enter the name. Suppose I enter the name as say Caroline. The enter name is present in the list. Okay. And if I run it again, enter a name. Suppose I enter the name as say Bintu. The name is not in the list. Now, what is this program doing? It is asking the user to enter a numerical value and print the equivalent month. Suppose the user enters the value six. It will display June. The sixth month is June. Suppose user enters value twelve. The twelfth month is December. So you will get the December in word in string format, right? If the user enters thirteen, you will get the message that the value is out of the range. So you are checking also. So what you are doing? You have defined the months list where you specified all the month names, right? On the screen, you are asking the user to enter the value between one and twelve. Suppose user enters six. Six will be in string format by this int function. The six is converted into integer and assigned to this n variable. Recall from the previous lecture, this is the usage of end operator. End operator is, is invisible here, but it is there, right? So what you are doing, you are checking whether the value of n is between one and twelve. Is six greater than one? Yes. Then it will check this second condition also. Is six less than equal to twelve? Yes. Both the condition has to be true to get into this if statement, right? Because six is between one and twelve. The control will go into this if block. The month is if I write months and n. N is six. It will display the seventh element because lists are zero based. So I have to decrement one value. I have to reduce one value from n. So it will display the month's fifth element. And fifth element is nothing but the June. See month zero, month one, month two, month three, month four, and month five. So it will access June, right? The only idea to decrement value one is because all the sequences. In almost all languages, everything is zero based. The value starts from the index location zero. Suppose I enter the value thirteen. For end operator, both the expressions have to be true. Thirteen is more than one, but it is not less than twelve. So else block will be executed. You get a message: value is out of the range. So let's run it and check it whether it's working. Asking to enter the value between one and twelve. Suppose I enter say six. The month is June. Suppose I run it again. Enter a value between one and twelve. Suppose I enter twelve. The month is December. Enter a value. Or suppose I enter say fifteen. The value is out of the range. Let's go to the next program. What we want to learn from this program? We have to learn two methods. One is append, and another is del method. Obviously, append will add the element at the end of the list, and delete will delete the list element at the specified index location. Also, I wanted to tell you that in list you can have dissimilar values also. 
like you have strings, you have numericals, right? In the arrays, you are supposed to have the similar elements, right? This is much advanced than arrays. So, I created a temp list and these are all list elements. The original list is temp list. So, you will get all the list elements displayed on the screen. I wanted to tell you slicing of the list. How to extract a piece? How to extract a subset of the list? This is slicing. I am asking to display the list element from 0 till 4th index location. This 4 is exclusive. So, the element from 0 till 3rd index location will be accessed and displayed. The first four elements in the list is Templist 0, John, Templist 1, Kelly, Templist 2, 10, Templist 3, Caroline, Templist 4 will not be accessed, it is 0 till 3. 4 is exclusive, ok. So, this is slicing of the list. The number of elements in the list are length, we already know, it will get you the length of the list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So, you get the output, the number of elements in the list are 7. Enter a name to add to the list. Suppose I enter the name as bin2. So, bin2 will be assigned to the variable m. By append method, this bin2 will be added at the end, that is after Kathleen. The element in the list row now are, you get all the elements with the bin2 at the end. Enter the element number to delete. Now, you have to specify the location that you want to delete. Suppose I enter the location as say 3, third value, right? But we know that the list are zero based. So, this third value is at index location 2. So, what I am doing, it will ask the user enter the number to delete. Suppose I enter value 3, 3 will be assigned to the variable n. I am using del method to delete an element from the list. I want to delete n minus 1, that is temp list second index location. See, this 10 is at second index location. After deleting it, the element in the list now are, so it you will get all the values except this 10. Okay. The element in the list can also be displayed as using this in keyword. So, you get all the list elements except this 10. Okay. Let's copy it and run it. Copy. Select Ctrl A, Delete key, Ctrl V to paste and run it. See. The original list is John, Kelly, 10, Caroline, 15, Steve and Kathleen. The first four elements, this is your list slicing. John, Kelly, 10 and Caroline. Okay. The number of elements is 7. Enter the name to add. Suppose I enter the name as bin2. So, what will happen? See, the element in the list are John, Kelly, 10, Caroline, 15, Steve, Kathleen and after Kathleen, what is added? Bin2. Enter the element number to delete. If I write 3, 10 will be deleted. If I write 5, 15 will be deleted. Suppose I enter 5. So, the value at index location 4 will be deleted. See, you get the list as John, Kelly, 10, Caroline, 15 is gone. Steve, Kathleen and bin2 is what we added. Okay. So, this program is also working perfectly well. What is that we want to learn through this program? See, up to all the programs we have seen it, that the values of the list elements were known. What if I want to create a list by asking the user to enter the data? So, I am creating an empty list. Okay. I will be asking the user to enter names. Suppose, user has entered three names. So, every name will be entered and will be assigned to the variable m. Through append method, you can enter numericals also, whatever. Will be added to this names list. So, this is how you are creating it. But we have to learn two more things. How to update a list element and how to sort it. This is what we have to learn through this program. So, the names I added, you are displaying the original names. Suppose the three names I have entered is Bintu, Ajmer and Rajasthan. Okay. Enter the name to search. Suppose I enter Ajmer. Is Ajmer in the list? Yes. The name Ajmer is found in the list at location. Can you see it? That Ajmer is at zero location, but you cannot say that the name exists at zero location. You have to say that the name Ajmer exists at the location one. So you have to add one to the index location. Okay. Have you followed why I am adding one to the index location? Because basically it is at the location one higher than the actual index location. And if I enter India, India is not in the list, you get the name India is not found in the list. Now enter the name to change. Suppose I enter bin2. Bin2 will be assigned to the variable q. Does q exist in the names list? Yes. Find out its location. By index method, you will find out bin2 exists at the location 1. At the 0th position, it is Ajmer. On the 1th position is bin2. So, lock will be having the index location 1. Enter the new name. Suppose I enter Harwani. Harwani will be assigned to the variable r. At the names location 1, bin2 exists. You are overwriting it by Harwani. 
the name Bintu in the list is changed to Harwani. Can you see this? And one thing more, I wanted to tell you the sort method. It automatically sorts the entire list element alphabetically. In earlier languages like C and C++, you are supposed to write a logic for it. You have to explicitly write a program to sort elements. In Python, the method is already there. So, most of the work is done by Python. Let's copy this program. Select and delete key to delete the earlier program. Let's run this. How many names are there? Suppose I enter three. Enter three name. I'm entering Ajumer, Bintu, Rajasthan. The original list of names is Ajumer, Bintu, Rajasthan. Enter the name to search. Suppose I enter Chirag. The name Chirag is not in the list. Enter the name to update. Suppose I enter the name as Bintu. Enter the new name. Suppose I write Harwani. The name Bintu in the list is changed to Harwani. Can you see it? Right? And by sorting method, what has happened that Ajmer, Harwani, Rajasthan, they are sorted now. If you followed this lecture, please subscribe to my channel. Share the video with your friends. Write your comments. What kind of programs you want me to write on? Thanks for watching the video. Have a nice day.